today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about do it yourself to declutter your life. Are you truly aware of the different kinds of clutter you have in your life? Do you know you need to clear some clutter and just need some guidance to get started? Have you desired to learn more about yourself? Learn how to clear your clutter yourself as we continue our month focused on things that I love. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired because it's my 400th episode. Wow, 400 episodes, pretty exciting. That is a big accomplishment. I was really excited. And on the big episodes, like I think on the 100th, I did clips from my favorite episodes and put together a compilation. I always tried 250, I can't remember what I did. Always a big milestones, I try to do something differently. And so when Rachel, who has been a guest a couple times on the podcast, wanted to interview me about my books, I was super excited. I have put my heart and soul. I can call myself an author. It's a really big deal. I'm super passionate about this. Wanted to create books, one, because I love to write, but I believe in giving people a bunch of different options. You always can't afford a coaching session, but most times you can afford an ebook. And it was a big deal for me. You know, I went through a cover designer and found someone I really loved at all these interviews. And anyway, it's just something that is my pride and joy. And so she wanted to ask me about why I created them and the things that she liked because Rachel and I are very similar. She works with hoarders and you definitely want to check out her podcast, Hoardganize. And she's just, Rachel and I are very similar in approaches to life, kind of like with my last guest. And I just really like Rachel and enjoy her. And I thought, What a fun way to do something different for my 400th episode. And you'll find out a little bit more about me and my process and the books and why I wanted to do that. And my hope from this episode is that it spurs you to take action to declutter your life in some way, shape, or form. It says to you, hey, this is what I need to do. This is the action that I need to take. This is that first step. This is what I can do to move forward. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey, collectors. Today, I have Julie Caraccio on the podcast and her gorgeous and super informative book, Clear Your Clutter, is published and available. And I wanted to talk to her about it because I just found so many valuable tips and nuggets throughout this book. And hopefully you will too when you buy it. And now, Julie, thank you for being here. What made you put this book out? You know, Rachel, I wanted to write a book that would support people. You know, there have been times in my life where I couldn't afford a coach. I couldn't afford something. And so I always am a firm believer of having stuff for free and then having things at different levels. So I was motivated primarily to have something. First of all, I'm an old lady because I like to have the book in my hand. And so I wanted something that people could hold. And if they are willing to do the work, they can change their life. And so I put it into 21 chapters. I'm all about our inner clutter reflects the outside and vice versa. And so I wanted to have people to have an affordable option where they could change their life. That was the primary motivation. And then I always wanted to be an author. It was a big deal for me. I love writing and I wanted to see my name in print on a book. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. Um, I really enjoyed going through it. And now, is this something that one of my listeners, like maybe somebody that's got excessive clutter, could find a value? I feel like it really covers a lot of organizing beliefs and misbeliefs. I would say yes, simply Mm -hmm. because, as I mentioned a moment ago, you know, it's all related. If we have physical clutter in our life, we have some type of inner clutter going on, whether it's with a relationship whether it's health, whether it's mental or emotional or spiritual, it's all related. So as you work on one area of your life, it automatically helps you in others. You know, you are a hoarding expert. I am not. And so you understand what's going on with hoarding, 
but I believe anything that helps you move forward in the right direction, gives you some kind of insight and increases your personal development can only help you. Yeah, no, I agree. And I love that you have journal prompts. That to me is something I like holding a book as well and writing in a book and then going back and seeing what I was like when I first started. Yeah. That definitely appeals to me. And I know we did an entire episode, I don't know if it was years ago now, but um, on spiritual clutter. And that is super interesting to me and something I don't really cover a lot in my podcast. So do you mind sharing again, just a little bit about spiritual clutter? Well, for me, spiritual clutter are things like, do you have gratitude? Are you able to forgive? Are you sharing your gifts with the world? And so when we are not living at our maximum potential, you know, then we're not living our life fully. And so that to me, the spiritual clutter can sometimes be the hardest thing to tackle, at least for me. You know, if you feel like a victim all the time, then that spiritual clutter. And so when you clear that, I mean, that can be the, it can be phenomenal. And I think that it's so important to look at those areas because they tend to be the more challenging and, and clear that and get moving. Cause that's what holds us back a lot of the times. Not always. I mean, everything can be combination and everything's individualized, but spiritual clutter is huge in my view. I agree. I agree. And, and you covered a bit, I don't want to give away too much, but you covered jealousy and gossip and things um, of that nature as being spiritual clutter. And, you know, we all kind of are faced with jealousy in one way, either we're jealous or other people are jealous of us. And it really does weigh on you. You know, it really, I know when I'm going through any kind of like drama or anything, it's just not a good feeling. It puts me in a different state. You know, you do feel like a victim, like, why does mm -hmm. everyone hate me? Like, I could get into that sometimes. So I, I really like that you covered the spiritual clutter as well, because I think sometimes people think of it as being more of like a religious kind yeah. of an approach. I don't know. That's when I heard it. I was like, oh, I wonder if it, and it could be, but I think when you talk about negative emotions being spiritual clutter. I mean, that's really deep because I think we're all working myself included on, on that all the time. Now, I love that you came up with, and it's, it's just chapter one. Hopefully you won't. Um, it just says, if everything has the same value, then nothing is valuable. And that really resonated with me and the people that listen to my podcast, mm -hmm. because it's very hard to determine what's valuable when, you know, you care as much about recycling on the floor as you do your favorite pet's ashes, you know, when they're all on the floor together, mixed up, you know, it's like really hard to tell what's valuable for people. So even starting, I mean, that was chapter one. I just loved your story about Jerry being angry with herself. And mm -hmm. I really think that listeners would really see themselves um and and learn a lot just even from chapter one so i mean i really like this book julie um you talk about exercise routines you talk about self-care and that's stuff that i'm all really all about and but you packaged it all neatly into this beautiful little book which i'm well, just totally impressed by it i really like this book um, oh, thank you. Let me I spent I... four years on it and my grammar oh. is atrocious. So it had two editors for grammar and then it had an editor for, although the one guy was kind of grammar slash content and then it had a content editor and my BFF Cotty has to get a shout out because she read it in a super early draft form. And instead of saying this sucks, well, you know, I think there's some things we could do to make it <laughs> I better. I love her. Cotty. Yes, she was amazing. Yes, Cotty's amazing. So, Shout out. you know, so encourage your writers out there, but it was an early draft. And if you give an early draft, give it to someone that you love, who's going to say, I can see the nuggets in here, but there's <laughs> things that we have to do to get it better. Yeah. I always think you're a wonderful writer. I know that you've helped me oh, with some of you. my blogs and stuff. So I, I mean, I, I just love the prompts and maybe I could do, I, I think I told you that I have a Tuesday group going on now. And we had talked about maybe using your book 
together in the future to go through this because I don't like reinventing the wheel. I know one day I'll write a book, I promise, but like using you your will. book or other books that I value um, is more attractive to me right now. And well, you, I want to just add, and I don't know if we can see it. So the other thing I did was a journal prompt series with kind of the same, this is the one that was a proof book, but that are all journal prompts in different areas. And part of that, in addition, why I wrote the other book is you have the wisdom within. Now, I know you do coaching like I do, Rachel, and you know that people know what's best for them. And our job is to pull that out, yep. serve as the mirror and help that come out. So that's one thing that I, why I love journal prompts so much. And as you mentioned, how have I grown? I yes. think that's a fun thing to look at, but you have that wisdom. So it's just about helping you excavate it and ask yourself those questions so that you can figure it out. And what I did a little differently that no other journal prompt books have, this was from the content. So I have this little Lotus on the side of the page, like I do in the other one. Mm -hmm. And if you have clutter, you tend to be overwhelmed. So once you write your response, then if you want as an extra step, you go back through and pick out and write on the right side of the Lotus. What are the most valuable things that I learned? What's most important for me within each prompt? And again, it might be more time consuming, but it allows you to move forward more easily because you've broken it down into one more step. Yeah. And that I find when I use journal prompts and, um, you know, I do a lot of self and personal growth work all the time, constantly. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Like there's something about writing it down on paper, even if you know, deep down and in, even if it's subconscious, like you write it down, you're like, oh yeah. You know, there's just something about writing it down and saying that's what I want, that's where I want to be, or that's yeah. what's holding me back from getting what I want. And yeah. the whole time you had it in you, but for me, writing it down on paper, relationships, finances, whatever, so be it. I can have like a, oh my God moment every single time I do it, because it's like organizing your thoughts and your feelings mm -hmm. all in the same place. And then being able to look and say, okay, that's why I'm not good at relationships or, okay, that's why, you know, um, so I just really think it's, it's a great book and you've got a lot of great quotes in here. Are they your quotes or? They are my quotes unless I, I have, it's been a while since I've read the book. If, mm -hmm. if I, they're my quotes, unless I attributed them to someone else. And I can't remember, I, you know, you have to be very careful unless it's been right. in like domain for a thousand years. So I might not have. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I just, but it's beautiful how you have like this one says unresolved emotions, clutter your heart, mind, and soul. I truly believe that. I truly yeah. believe that. And you know, what's important for me. So I've been in business since 2009 and most people still concentrate on the physical clutter. More have gotten interested in the mental, but I want the whole package. I want the holistic. I want you to rethink what you think of as clutter because clutter is holding you back from an abundant light. And I want everyone out there sharing the get. We all have gifts. We're all awesome. We're all amazing. And then life happens. We're this beautiful newborn. And then society puts stuff on us, our families, our friends, and we've forgotten our brilliance. So it's about reawakening that and moving forward and sharing your gifts. And you talk about uh, emotional clutter. And how is that different from spiritual clutter? I'm well, you know, I, because I would say it begins with an emotion. Okay. So, you know, like for instance, giving thanks, eh, you know, I wouldn't spend too much time analyzing it, but you know, jealousy is an emotion or not expressing your emotions is huge because everything's energy, whether you believe that from a physics perspective, or you believe that from your your spiritual or religious beliefs. And so it stays stuck in it. Louise Hayes calls it dis-ease because if you have that anger, I just had half my thyroid taken out in December. You will never convince me that it was not from years of not speaking my truth and not from years of standing up for myself. I believe that that growth happened because it's like, okay, this energy is just going to stay stagnant in my in my body and everywhere else, I haven't released my anger. I haven't released blah, 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 blah. It shows up as disease. Yeah. And so that's why I'm a first, like, get the emotions out, get them out. Or if you're angry all the time, I know you have probably encountered someone that has, it's like they're at the 
restaurant ordering something and they bring salt instead of pepper and they explode. Yes. It's not about the salt and pepper. It's about something else. But if you're not managing, you're not releasing, you're not paying attention, then you have those knee jerk reactions where you explode. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I know people like that. I'm not like that at all, but I try not yeah. to be. Um... Does the thought of clearing your clutter overwhelm you? Clear your clutter inside and out has 21 standalone chapters to fit your schedule and lifestyle. Stop being afraid, gain clarity, and go at your own pace. The Clear Your Clutter Inside Not Workbook lets you record your thoughts step by step as you go through the book. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and also available for purchase on Amazon. Um, and that you cover when life throws you a curveball. I think that's so important, Rachel. Mm -hmm. There is not, I, I joke, my brother, I think has, I, I always will say to him, you must have done some, a lot of junk in your previous lives because you're basically sliding through this one. And, you know, you know, a couple of times he should have died. He, but, you know, because I know him and he's my brother, he's also had challenges in life. If you don't know him, you might not see it. We all have challenges. Yeah. And so is it, are you going to be able to get through it? Are you going to be resilient? Or are you going to form a puddle on the floor and not be able to move forward. You know, an example I would use is, I see this a lot with people in relationships. Maybe they get married and get a divorce or they have a relationship end and they remain bitter towards that person. Mm -hmm. And so what they don't realize with all the focus on the other person and how they did them wrong, you're not gonna find someone if that's your focus. And you might find another rela relationship, but it's not gonna be happy. And you're probably gonna recreate whatever wasn't healed from the previous relationship. Yeah. And so that's what, why I try to cover many different things is for you to see, because maybe you read about jealousy and think, oh, that's why my relationships haven't worked out because I've been jealous of them. Or I've been jealous when, because they're so good looking that someone checks them out or says how good looking they are. And whatever, it's about you and it's about healing yourself. Whatever you do or whatever people say and do to you has zero to do with you. And, you know, I've been talking about resiliency with people and interviewing people and we have become less resilient and how I see it. And I hope I want to state it really clearly for your audience. You know, I see all these content warnings. I see all these trigger warnings and you need to heal. And what people don't, I think, comprehend, you can put all those social, those warnings on social media, but then when you go to the grocery store, someone's going to annoy you and do whatever it is that you've been trying to avoid seeing or doing. And so if you can change your perspective, oh, this comes up, this is bringing something up to be healed. Thank you. I haven't healed that. Instead of being like, I can't see it. I can't because that's avoiding when we put yeah. all this trigger with, then you're not going to heal. Then you stay stuck when you don't heal. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, especially with, you know, everything going on with the virus and, you know, I mean, people are terrified in their homes right now. They really are. I've been talking to a lot of people that are really stressed out and they're having, you know, not just physical clutter, but the emotional and the spiritual, their relationships are being affected. So this book is really just for anyone, I think, even someone like me that doesn't have a lot of clutter, but might have you know, regular things going on in their life that are right. annoying <laughs> yeah. or make you mad. Um, but I mean, you do talk about space clearing too. And I love that um, because I think it's really good to clear a space once you've been working in it. And I don't actually talk about this much on my podcast. It's kind of more your, your thing. Do you mind? Oh covering? yeah. Well, Absolutely. Well, Rachel, you also have sage that people can purchase from you and you've made essential oils, which are great for energetic clearing. And that's, is to me as important as the space clearing. So everything, so everything's energy. So it's stuck and stagnant. So even if you clean out a hoarder's area, their home, 
even if you clean out your office space, the residual energy is still there. So that's why I like space clearing. And I'm really like, it's not been an issue because of COVID. I'm very particular about who comes in our home yeah. because of the energy and how people feel. So I, especially when I first moved to Raleigh and I'd host these meetups and I'd never met these people. I'm like, yeah, bring out the sage. We got to be doing some clearing after they've gone, but it, it gets that energy moving. And remember when you're clearing, get those corners, get the floor. Cause energy can get trapped in there, but it, it's about moving that energy out. And then what I like to do is then set an attention. Like, okay, I'm in my office. My intention is to create abundance so I can take care of my cats and the life that they're accustomed to. <laughs> my, you know, intention is to be creative in here so I can write another book that supports people in clearing their clutter. So you do the space clearing, you clear it and then set the intention. But I think that's so important because remember you've done it. It's like, you, I love how you talked about earlier, like actually writing it down. So I, I clear my space. I do the physical thing to do that. And then I set the intention. And so it's like planted something that reminder in your head. So even if you're not aware of it, when I walk into this office, oh, I'm going to be creative. I'm going to be abundant, whatever it is that you want to create. But you have set that intention and you have declared to the universe. So I like writing too. I am this. I desire this, yeah. you know, and that's like you're staking your claim. That's right. And the office is such a, I'm in my office as well. I, I'm constantly saging in here if, you know, um, and then I deal with a lot of people that are emotional and they've gone through trauma and they're crying mm -hmm. when I work with them. So I usually sage my car. Um, I sage the back of the truck because the donations are probably lingering with all sorts of. And yourself. Yes. You're saging I yourself. sage myself. Um, so I think it's a really thing. I know people usually accuse me of, you know, I grew up in Berkeley. So they're like, oh, that's just hippy dippy. But really, not at all. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think it's really helpful. I use the sage um, and I like Palo Santos. So I think that is just really. Okay. I have to, I have to stop you on Palo Santos because I've been, I'm about to finish my first year course oh. in, in uh, plant medicine, which I'm super passionate about. Palo Santos is being overgrown because Americans want it. So be very, it's okay if you have some, but I'm going to encourage you like find it Artemisia that hasn't been overgrown, white sage is being overgrown. And so I, the, sorry, this is a promise I have made in plant medicine since being educated on it. If there are other options you can find for things that are ethically harvested and aren't endangered, please do so. Really? I had no idea. And that means I didn't a lot until I to took me. the class. Yeah. Yeah. I, I won't buy any more. And I honestly like the smell of sage a little bit better. Um, but I, I love the smell of sage. Golly, I didn't even know that about Palo Santo. So that's it's good. okay. As long as I, I think I put a footnote in the book about that because I learned, I actually updated the book once I had published it. The one of the nice things about Amazon is that you can go in and and update it because I had learned that because I'm like, I really want, because I have this knowledge and, you know, I have such respect for the plants and I have respect for other cultures, always working to learn and grow more is that if I've been taught this, then I want to share it. Oh yeah. No, I don't want to use anything that's not sustainable. No, but you didn't know. I didn't know until I took <laughs> the course. Yeah. You know, I'm glad I said it. Learn these things. Yeah, I am too. I, yeah. Yeah. You don't know these things. I just learned about almond milk. Like if you're not Really? <laughs> oh, I have a lactose intolerant husband. So we have, we have uh, almond milk. Although I got, I went wild and crazy and got oat milk. I love the oat milk. Oat milk. Well, I smoothies. heard that the almond milk wasn't sustainably grown. So I had to Ooh. switch. Okay. See, I had a kid school me a couple of, one of my clients, like teenagers was like, no, it's, I don't do almond milk. Cause I brought over some. Yeah. Oh, so I have to, uh, thank you. See, we educate <laughs> each other. That's why you do these. I never knew that. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to whim. I'm going to had it at Aldi. I'm going to try oat milk. Oh, it's so creamy. Love oat milk. Shout nice. out to oat milk. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> except for the crazy guy on the Super Bowl commercial. Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. Yeah. He was, I don't know what he was doing. Some, he did not get good advice in my humble opinion. Oh, I'll have to YouTube it. So who do you just, what, would you recommend for people they get your book in the mail or they get your ebook version is it something that you take a weekend is it something that you do over a month i mean what would be your suggestion 
because I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with how long they're supposed to do something. There is no set. It's what individualized, whatever works for you. What I would say, here's what I usually suggest typically. One, consider reading it all through. Like it doesn't have to be, I read in the bathtub. When I have to pay attention, I will slowly read a book in the bathtub. But you might, I have the chapters at the beginning. The other thing you can do, like I would say, just read it through and just maybe kind of let it percolate. Or you open up and say, wow, I know I have a problem with jealousy. I'm just going to bam right to that chapter. Yeah. Because what I wanted to do is keep each chapter contained so that they could do it a chapter, if they just want to do a chat, a standalone chapter, do it that way. And then I give other tips throughout the books about taking action and moving forward, but they can do it that way. If they want, whatever they feel they need to work on, start there. You know, again, anything you do makes you move forward. It supports you. You're doing it. So if you, it takes you six months to do one chapter, but you're making progress, have at it. Good job. Gold star. You, yeah. You're doing it. Yeah, I found it, I thought it was a really easy read. And then the kind of thing that you could go back to and look at your answers and um, reflect upon those. So what else do you have going on, Julie? How can people connect with you? You've got stuff all over the internet. <laughs> Trying to, hopefully everything that's above board. Now, as far as I know, it's above board. So they can find <laughs> the books. They can find me at Reawaken Your Brilliance. I have started a ch channel on Patreon, How to Declutter Your Life with Julie Caraccio. You can find me there and join that community and all good information on Reawaken Your Brilliance. I do sell the books, but, and then I apologize in advance. Amazon is taking forever, it seems, to get anything else. But, and then I'm also on Google Play. As I, everything's an ebook as well. I was telling Rachel prior to the show, mm -hmm. someone said to me, I'm going blind. And I didn't realize there were, apps or whatever that you can download so that you can write. So everything's available in ebook as well. That's amazing. And maybe people didn't know that. So people can download the ebook and then open it in an app and fill out their answers electronically. That's super yeah, cool. So, yeah. That's so great. like you can, you can actually, I guess, I don't know how it works. So I don't have it. Like for instance, my, my friend had a brain tumor. And so when she got the tumor taken out, you know, she had to relearn how to brush her teeth, do all that. And so it allows her, she said she can bookmark, she can make notes. So I, I, I feel old, like this technology is apparently incredible, but right. yeah, so they, yeah, so they can do all that. Cause I said, who wants an ebook of, they're not going to be no, but and people are like, yeah, it's like, okay, you're in charge. That's great. E yeah. And are you still doing your podcast two times a month? I what? am. I'm doing clear your clutter inside and out the podcast. I've gone down to two episodes just because with life and with the Patreon channel, that's for people who, you know, are kind of a little more serious about moving forward and getting a little more support. And so they'll get bonus episodes and more. No, well, I think that's really great. I mean, you've been working for years, just giving away advice weekly for free. I think it makes a lot of sense for you to get more well, of a subscription or a membership base. Thank you. And, you know, I say that for you and anyone who has a product that, you know, a lot of times we think we want everything for free, but you have no skin in the game when you get it for free. So you are less likely to take action before it. And I want a revolution. I want everyone clearing their clutter. I want to live in a world where we're sharing our gifts. We're passionate about what we're doing. We're loving on one another. And we're not in that world right now. But if you don't make the investment not everyone. I'm saying you, sometimes you can be motivated. I know people will do things and then they are able to do it on the, on their own, but not all the time. And then there needs to be an equal exchange of energy. Like if you put something together, love offering or whatever you want to call it. But you know, I have, have really jumped on that recently. Cause I thought you got to walk your talk. You tell your clients this all the time and yep. it's important. And if I want to say, if you get something yep. for free, share the product, write a review, you know, recommend it, do things that still amount to an equal exchange of energy. Exactly. And if people are watching this on YouTube, they can definitely subscribe. They can subscribe to you, subscribe they to can me. Like they can you, like you, yes. Right? Share Leave the video. Comment, share the yeah. video. It's really important to us when you all share our advice and stuff, because we really put a lot into it. I mean, right now, what I got up at six o'clock on a Sunday morning to put out this show, which is free. And um, so, so I like what you're doing, Julie. I think that people really could learn a lot from this book. I think that um, it's a definite must 
read, whether it's an ebook or whether it's in person like I have. And I look forward to using some of these prompts in the future with you and we could do something. I think Rachel and I are going to have something exciting <laughs> down the road, guys. We're not going to reveal it now, but That's we've right. heard something in the past and work really well together. I think we have, we're cooking up something that I think everyone would enjoy. Definitely. Well, it's so wonderful to talk to you, to see you. And I hope people get your book and of course, review it once they've gotten it. Thank you. It's always any- a pleasure. Oh, no, I love hanging okay. out with you. You keep it real like I do. And I appreciate <laughs> Appreciate the opportunity to share my books because I'm super passionate about them. Yeah, definitely. And they're, they're definitely worthwhile picking up. Love it. Thank you. Take actions from today's podcast. If you feel moved to, buy one of my books. Read the book. Contemplate what clutter you'd like to remove. Create a plan to declutter your life. Move forward and take that first step. On our next episode, we're talking about releasing health clutter with some products I love. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.